Well, hello there, health coaches. Last week on the show, we were talking about the difference between scrolling and searching, very different behaviors, and why our most motivated clients are probably out there right now and they're looking for your help. Like they are actively searching for it. They're searching on Google, which is of course, number one search engine. They're searching on YouTube, which is number two. And they're searching Pinterest, which is the surprise third largest search engine on the internet. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. This episode is brought to you by my favorite client management tool, Practice Better. You can save 30% for your first three months at healthcoachpower.com slash PB and use code HCP30, the number 30, HCP30. So my friend Janet O is back today to help clean up our dusty old Pinterest profiles and make better use of them to attract clients. Janet, thanks for joining us again. <laughs> thanks for having me. I love that. We're going to clean them up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those are your words. Like you suggested yeah. those words. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what it feels like when you have. And I, I asked in our group the other day, I asked who has a Pinterest profile and almost everybody like said they have something, but you know, you just have a couple things that you've pinned or it's just kind of random or you don't, you know, you just barely have your profile set up. And sometimes it just sits there in the background. So we are going to clean those suckers up so that they can be much more useful and we have a follow-up training with much more, and that is happening next week on April 26th. So if you haven't already, and you're just dying to know how to use Pinterest more effectively, I want you to register for that free training. Right now, it's over at healthcoachpower.com slash Pinterest. I'm going to put that link over here in our comments for anybody who's interested. Now, if you guys are here live, tell us in the comments. Do you use Pinterest for business? Do you use it for fun? Either, both. You know, personally, I've been pinning recipes for years and years and years. It's, it's like how I do my meal planning. That's my favorite way to find recipes online. And for a long time in my own health coaching business, I was developing recipes and getting them shared on Pinterest as well. And that was huge for driving website traffic. But Pinterest is so much more than recipes. That is what I am learning. There's so much more. <laughs> yeah. And there's so much more than using it as a hobby. So, Jana, you got to help us today. How do we start taking advantage? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I love that um, that you're saying that. I realized when I st I've been working with um, health coaches and other types of entrepreneurs, but a lot of self-improvement and health coaches, especially for the last seven years, helping them set up Pinterest and use it to attract clients. And I remember in the beginning, I talked a lot about setting up a profile and there are still some people that set up a profile, but I've learned that the vast majority of people, especially health and wellness coaches, it's not really so much about setting it up from scratch. It's about starting by cleaning it up um, so that we can actually start using it more optimally because I think what happens a lot of times is we start businesses about something we're passionate about. And I know that that happens for a lot of health coaches is that they are starting their business because they're passionate about some particular area of health and health in general, and they want to help others experience maybe a change that they experienced, for example, and share what they know and what they've learned over the years um, and help people to make progress toward their goals. And so a lot of times that's reflected in their personal Pinterest profiles because they've been curating all of these amazing ideas. Some of them are food related, of course, uh, but some of them aren't food as well. Um, and so now they have this great Pinterest profile that has a lot of stuff on it that's related to their business, but it also has a lot of stuff on it that's not related to their business because, you know, we are, you know, well-rounded humans and we have other things that we, you know, save pins about too. Things like travel to, you know, my summer trip to Italy or, you know, my bathroom renovation or, um, you know, ice cream recipes for dogs, you know, things like that. <laughs> oh, we keep talking about dogs. Dogs keep coming up in our conversations. Um, they have yeah. Lately. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I have kind of um, boiled things down and I figured I'd share today like three steps that someone can take if they want to get started using Pinterest to attract clients. Um, maybe you've been hearing some of the benefits of Pinterest, like it's more low maintenance and less drama than social media. And as you mentioned, Michelle, that it brings a lot of people who are already looking for the things that you help with, which makes them very action taking in general. And you want more action takers, right, in your audience and on your list, but you're not sure where to start. And maybe you feel a little overwhelmed because you have all this stuff on your profile. So this is kind of like almost like a, 
if Pinterest 101 is where we start, this is almost like the prerequisite where we start it with a fresh, you know, as fresh as we can anyway, kind of a clean slate. So Good. I have like three steps to talk about. Yeah. I have a question before you get into that. And this is mm -hmm. on behalf of Sean, who said, I have an account. Is that the same as a profile? Yeah, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I think of your account as kind of like your full account. So that would include if you already have a business account, your analytics dashboard and, you know, other parts where you can look at your audience insights, whereas your profile is kind of like the part that's about you, where you have your name and your bio and your boards and that type of thing. But yeah, I would say that those two are very similar and I almost use them interchangeably sometimes talking about Pinterest. Yeah. My, my feeling was that, you know, yes, if you have an account, you have a profile, but I bet your profile is pretty bare bones. Like maybe you haven't even uploaded a photo of yourself, or maybe you haven't typed anything into the bio. You know, it's like you just set up yeah. an account because you yourself were looking for barbecue ideas last summer and that's it. Right. That definitely could show up that way too, where people just, like you said, sort of made the account to get access to the platform, but haven't really thought about what their profile says about them to people who potentially would find them as future clients. Totally. So, and yeah. then the other thing that I saw, cause I was just clicking through a couple of people left links. I looked at everybody's oh, Pinterest okay. profiles and a few people were even saying, you know, yes, I'm using this to, you know, hopefully find clients. Yeah. And so it's pretty standard. Here's what it looks like you guys. Cause I've seen enough of them and I've done it myself. If you have a cover photo, it's like a nice picture of food. And then you have a beautiful headshot of yourself. And then your bio says something like, I'm a health coach and I help, you know, like women get healthier and maybe like I'm in California or, you know, whatever, something about you. Cause it's like your little bio. And then like me, or like Jenna was describing, you have a bunch of boards. One's like healthy desserts. One's like healthy, whatever drinks and, yeah. you know, just all the stuff that's interesting to you. I always have like a board for <laughs> fermented foods and one for not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I was never born for not healthy because that's where I put all like cupcakes and stuff that I make for the kids. Right. So um, anything that we've just talked about from barely having yep. a profile at all to having something that you're using a little bit more as a hobbyist or something that you even feel like you're using for business, but maybe without any strategy behind it, listen to everything Jana's about to say. This is what you need. <laughs> I could see it. I could see it in everyone's profile. I'm like, they need Jenna for this and they need Jenna for that. So <laughs> lay it on us. What do we All need right. to do? Yeah. And I love that you mentioned, um, you know, a little bit about the bio and the image of the food and things like that, because there are a lot of things that you'll want to do to um, optimize your Pinterest profile if you truly want to use it to attract clients. Um, and that's going to be things like, you know, doing something different probably with that profile image and updating your bio. Um, but before we can even do that type of stuff, it really makes sense to back up, especially if you have a lot of boards and a lot of pins and clean up. So that's what we're going to talk about. So the first step um, I find works really well um, for people who have a lot of boards and a lot of pins and really want to get focused on using this now in a different way than they've ever thought about it before um, is to declutter the boards. Um, and so I don't recommend that you worry about like reorganizing pins and putting them on different boards or removing any pins. All I really want you to do is look at your boards. Now, for some people, um, that means they have, you know, 25, 30, 50 boards, uh, maybe even more if you've been pinning a long time. And for some people, it means that you have less. Either way, I want you to start by actually step one is to look at all your boards and decide if there are any that are really not relevant to your business. Um, and when I say relevant to your business, I mean like really relevant to what you are doing. So if you've already, and I hope you have, um, worked with Michelle to choose your niche and your target audience. Um, I'm not sure if that's the words that you use, Michelle, but if you've yes, done yes. that already, okay, good. Um, then think about it that way. You know, which of these boards is relevant to my niche and exactly the types of outcomes that I'm helping clients with. And you want to actually either make those boards that are not relevant to that um, target audience and what you help with. You want to make them either secret or you want to archive them. And if you're going to make them secret, that means going into each of the board's settings and just toggling on the little toggle that says, make this board secret. Um, and if you're going to archive it, then it means going to the three little dots and just archiving it. And it's pretty clear, you know, where to go to do that. 
Um, the difference is, is that if you make the board secret, you'll still be able to pin to it, but Pinterest won't take uh, it into consideration when trying to understand, I'm going to personify Pinterest for a second and the algorithm, who to show your pins to and what you're all about as a business. And then if you archive them, that means they're really out of the way. You won't see them anymore. They'll be way at the bottom of your boards when you're logged in. Um, and you can always unarchive them. So none of this is permanent. So don't worry. Don't be like, oh, I don't know what, if I should do this because I don't know, you know whether this is the right move or whatnot. You can always go and change these things, toggle it back to not secret, unarchive it, whatever. But if you archive it, it's way out of the way, but you can't pin to it anymore either. Um, so if you want to keep using your Pinterest profile for your personal reasons, um, then the ones that you think you'll keep pinning to, you might want to make those secret instead of archiving them. That's kind of the difference there. This was um, very, it seems so obvious, but like when, like when you were helping me with this, I was like, oh yeah, like that makes so much sense. And even just personally, I had boards that were maybe um, food for toddlers and I don't have toddlers anymore. Oh. That's also not relevant to my target market. So that was one yeah. to archive. Yeah. Yeah. We're not, we're not even using that one anymore, but then yeah. others, you know, like um, my not healthy board where I put my now world famous, according to my children, cupcakes that are made in an ice cream cone, which I do for their birthdays. And they just think it's the coolest thing ever. Uh, <laughs> once a year, they get the cupcake cone. And so anyway, that I turned into a secret board because mm -hmm. any recipes like that, I want to be able to continue to access for myself, but they're not relevant again to my business or to my yep. target market. So it just helped to just like clean it up and just think through the yep. eyes of not me as a user, but for like a client that I would hope to attract, what would they be interested in and useful? What would they want from me? And actually I was left with not that many boards because I had been approaching it like I was the user. And that's really the difference, right? Between using the platform for ourselves <laughs> versus using it as a marketing tool. Right, exactly. And I want to mention a couple of things about this step, because sometimes I get a little resistance from people on it. And so some people listening might be like, "Ooh, I don't know if I want to do this. The you, so first of all, the first piece of resistance um, might be around the idea that um, like, well, isn't it a good idea to show my prospective clients that I'm a well-rounded person? So if I keep my boards public and people can see that I have a board about a bathroom renovation, even though it has nothing to do with my business, and I have a board about my summer trip to Italy, even though it has nothing to do with my business, doesn't that kind of humanize me? Um, and the answer to that is no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the answer is, remember, Pinterest is actually a search engine. It's not social media. And so people don't really go to Pinterest looking to find people to follow and they don't really care about your Italy trip. They don't really care about those other things. What they care about is the thing that they went to Pinterest looking for solutions about. And if they go to Pinterest looking for solutions about the thing that you help with, whether that is fertility or whether it is um, PCOS remedies or whatever that thing is, you want them to be able to find you. And that's the other piece that I want to make really clear about doing this step, even though it might feel a little stretchy for some people, is that when you make these boards secret or archive them, you help people find you when they're looking for your things because you're helping Pinterest understand what your account is about. If you keep your dog ice cream recipes and your bathroom renovation recipes, I mean, <laughs> boards and your Italy boards, you're confusing Pinterest and you're making it harder for Pinterest to know who to show your profile to and who to show your boards and your pins to. So if we truly want to use Pinterest as a way to attract clients, um, even though it might feel a little stretchy, you want to really remember this is a search engine, not social media. I'm going to make my Pinterest profile all about the thing that I help clients with. Does that make sense? Okay. That makes so much sense. It's like, cool. when you say it, it's so obvious, but then 0% of us think that way from the get-go. We all set it up with our own interests in mind. Right. And we're not yeah. thinking about the algorithm, et cetera, et cetera. So right. that's super helpful. And what Jana said is so important to remember, Pinterest is not social media. People do not follow you because they want to get to know you. Right. They follow you because you post great cupcake recipes or whatever it is. Yeah, they they follow you because they've decided based on your pen or your profile that there's something about you that they want to learn. You know, um, they want to learn the thing that you that you teach or that you help with or that you coach around. So yeah, great. 
So that's step one. Clean yes. it up. Clean up yeah. the boards. Yeah. Like and it. I love that you said, Michelle, and I hope that some people experience this too, that once you do that cleanup, you actually have, you don't have that many boards left um, because that's going to make it so much easier to do the next couple of steps. And that is going to, when you have, you know, 35 boards or 50 boards, I had a client that had 120 something boards once that I cleaned up for her. Um, it makes it hard to imagine tackling these next steps. But if you do that decluttering first, just like any decluttering in our houses or whatever, it makes things easier. So the next step um, is to actually do some keyword research. And so you'll want to go into Pinterest um, and do some keyword research. And I know it sounds boring and hard, but it really isn't. It's actually fun because you get to find out what people are looking for around the thing that you're passionate about. Um, and it's actually not hard because if you have a system to follow, um, like the one that I have and that I teach, it's just, it's just not hard. It's just, it's a little bit, it's, it's, um, I don't want to say tedious because it really is fun because the more you do it, the more you start to get excited. You're like, oh, people are searching that. I, that's great to know. I think, and it's, you write better, it down I think it's fascinating and, yeah. actually. Yeah. It's a little time consuming. Like you probably want to spend an hour or two on it, but, um, it's not hard, you know? So, um, I promise it's not hard. And so what you want to do when you do your keyword research is end up with some phrases that you find that are being searched around your space, around the thing that you coach around. So that's going to be step two is to do that keyword research. Yeah, um, and it and really is interesting, you guys, because you'll be like, oh, like, no, like it'll click. Oh, people are searching for X, Y, Z. Like I have that. I help right. with that. I'm the person, you know? So then yeah. you're like, oh, I get it. Like, I understand how this process works. And it's just so fascinating because things that you would never think anyone is searching for, like they are, <laughs> and I think we don't, you know, it's just, we got to put ourselves in their shoes, but sometimes it's yeah. hard to, to do that. But when you literally are looking at the data that says, oh no, we got plenty of searches of whatever ice cream, cupcake cones, yep. then you're like, okay. Yep. That's I love a great it. piece of content. Yep. I, um, I actually built it into my process to ask people who take my courses when they are learning keyword research to email me with keywords that surprise them that they're excited about. Um, and it's so fun to get those emails because they're just, I can tell right through the email that they're just lit up about it, you know? So I promise it's really fun. It's not as boring as it sounds. Keyword research. It's really fun. So, <laughs> um, and it sets you up for step three, which is to go back to those boards that you did not archive, that you did not make secret and rename them. Um, so if you have a board that had a name before that wasn't keyword optimized, now that you have your keyword research done, you can rename that board with something that is keyword optimized. So I don't know why, but a lot of people call their Pinterest boards things like um, yum <laughs> when they're food. So that would be an example of one that's not, you know, not keyword optimized. So if you have one, that, let's say you teach plant-based eating and you have boards that are like um, all plant, all yum, 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 desserts, all plants or something like that. <laughs> no, something, for real, that's what people name their boards. Yeah, yes. <laughs> something cute and, you know, that you think is just cute because in the moment you were like, that's boring to just name it, you know, plant-based desserts. Now, because you did your keyword research, you're going to go, oh, okay. And we're going to rename that board plant-based desserts because you're going to discover that that's actually what people are searching for. And we want those key, those boards to be keyword optimized. Um, and then if you see any big gaps, because you only maybe had six or seven boards left, let's say, and you renamed the ones that needed to be renamed, and there's a bunch of sort of like holes in it where you have things that you do a lot of content creation about or that are a big part of your frameworks and things or what you teach, let's say, instead of framework, um, then you want to create a few new boards as well. And I usually recommend to start with around 10 or 15 roughly optimized boards. If you want a few more, that's totally fine. Um, but you want to get yourself now to the point where you have 10 or 15 boards that have names that are actually keywords, not just things that are yum, yum, yum plants. Um, so that's the third step is to then round out you know, re, re, rename and kind of round out the boards you have um, so that they match up with the things that you are an expert on and create content about. Um, and you, we want to have around 10 or 15 boards. Um, so, and then you can move on to tackling things like, okay, what do I want in my bio? You know, um, things like that. What do I want people to do next when they find me, when they find my profile and my boards, things like that. Right. But just actually having a set of boards that are worth looking at and make sense to somebody, such a good place to start. Yeah, I have a question. And, oh, go ahead. Oh, and I just want to make sure it is, you're right. That's part of it. But remember a big part of it is signaling to Pinterest what we're about so that when people search for something like plant-based desserts, or um, what was one of the examples we were using yesterday, um, you know, fitness, fitness safety during pregnancy or something like that, 
Pinterest knows to match you up with those searches. That's the other big part of why we're doing this, not just to help people know what we're about, but to help the algorithm know what we're about. So sorry to talk over you, Michelle. No, no, no. That's very good point. And yeah. um, when you were talking, I was just thinking of the example, like, okay, uh, maybe in my health coaching practice, let's say I work with women who have Hashimoto's disease. And when I do my board cleanup and I get rid of my kitchen renovation and whatever, you know, all my stuff, maybe I'm only left with a couple boards that still make sense. And there's a big gaping hole though, because something I know I'm always talking to my clients about is going gluten-free. So in that case, like I thought, oh, well, I would create a board that says like gluten-free meals or maybe gluten-free breakfast or gluten-free whatever. Yep. But because I, in this case, work with women who have Hashimoto's disease and there's so many different reasons to go gluten-free, like what I named the board gluten-free breakfast for Hashimoto's. Probably. Yeah. I would um, let your keyword research and your keyword plan um, kind of dictate that. And I, I, I talk about how to make those decisions a little bit more in, in other places, but yeah, that would probably end up being what it is because generally I like lean towards being more specific yeah. um, instead of more general. So I, I like that idea a lot. I would go that direction. Good. Cause I'm thinking if people are just looking for gluten-free, it could be for a hundred different reasons and right. they find me great, but they're not part of my target market. So mm, right. no, maybe not and the right person. There might be kind of a conversation and this might be something we'll talk about more um, later on when we do our more detailed training, but maybe thinking about whether or not your ideal people, uh, maybe they just found out they have Hashimoto's disease, but they don't even really know yet that gluten-free could help. You know what I mean? So what are they searching? Are they searching gluten-free before they know that? Or are they searching Hashimoto's, you know? So Food that's part Hashimoto's of the thought process. Too. Yeah, exactly. Diet or something yes, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Now it is all starting to make sense. So good. You brought up the fact that we have that training coming up next week. We're going to be talking about three secrets to attract clients using Pinterest and you can sign up for free. It's at healthcoachpower.com slash Pinterest. Jenna, what do you think is the biggest mistake that people continue to make? Like the hardest habit to break when even, even maybe after someone's gone through your course or, you know, they've heard it a hundred times. I just feel like we always fall into the same traps. I see it in various, you know, marketing work that I do with coaches. And I'm just curious what you see. Yeah. You know, I don't know if this is specific enough, but the thing that's coming to mind is um, we always kind of have to be regularly touching base um, with the fact that Pinterest is a search engine. So it works more like Google than it works like Instagram, for example, or other social um, networks that we might be active on. And that shows up in a lot of different ways. You might think to yourself like, oh, I haven't like commented on other people's pins in a while or something like that. You don't have to do that on Pinterest. It's not part of the deal. Um, or you might think like, um, oh, the pin that I just pinned yesterday didn't get 1,200 views, um, but instead you're not, you're forgetting that the pin that you pinned two months ago, um, you know, got 1,200 views. So there's like different ways that that shows up, but I think it all rolls into the idea that we're trained on social media. Our brains are very social media oriented. Mm. So we have to remember that there are certain things you do differently on Pinterest and certain approaches you have to take for Pinterest success. Um, and they all kind of are based on the idea that it's a search engine, not social media. Um, so I think just remembering those things and even I sometimes occasionally like backslide into social media thinking on the platform, uh, but I catch myself and just, you know, remind myself that it's search engine and that we need to treat it that way. Yeah. Right. We're not getting our dopamine hits when we wake up in the morning and see that we got you know, all these likes on our most recent post, right. it just doesn't work like that, which is right. why we love it. Which yeah. is really good, but you're right. Like we're trained to think about it the other way. Yeah. We love it for the reason, for that reason that it doesn't have those negative effects. You know, Pinterest is a happier place in, in corner of the internet. We don't have to have all the drama that happens on social media, but sometimes it feels weird because we're almost expecting it to feel like social media. So you're like, Hmm, what's going on here? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Okay. That was a really good one. And I'll share one before we go. Um, when you were talking about naming the boards, you said something that I was like, you know what? For everybody listening, even if you never use Pinterest ever in your entire life, this idea of using words that are very clear mm -hmm. can seem boring, 
but whether you're doing it for the sake of searchability or you're doing it just for the sake of clarity, anytime you're writing, you're writing a headline, you have a new freebie, you have a webinar, there's this tendency for us to want to be cutesy and clever with our titles. We want to use alliteration. We want to use some cliche. We want it to rhyme. And that does nothing for your marketing. Clarity is always better. It's okay if it's a little bit boring. It doesn't have to be catchy. We just want people to, at a glance, understand what the heck it is. Yeah. And what's in it for them too. You know, that's <laughs> yes. the part that it's hard to understand what's in it for me if I don't even understand what it is. <laughs> so that's yeah. exactly right. So I think there's so many things that you're teaching us about Pinterest that like, yes, are very particular to the platform, but just good marketing in general. So again, if you guys haven't signed up yet, you're going to learn so much next week when we do a little bit of a deeper dive, you can join. I mean, why wouldn't you want to join Jana and I again? We have so much fun. We have so much to share with you and it's completely free. So sign up now. It's at healthcoachpower.com slash Pinterest. And that's happening on April 26th. Jana, I will see you then. Great. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.